I went from a grade five to a grade nine in GCSE maths. And if I was revising for the subject again, this is every single thing that I would do. Trust me when I tell you that you're going to want to save this video for later because I also took A-level maths. I got two A-stars and two maths A-levels and I actually found GCSE maths. Now that probably sounds completely absurd, let me explain myself. The reason that I found GCSE maths so difficult and why I was stuck on that grade five for the longest time is that I didn't really understand how the topics linked together. Everything was taught very sporadically, very much in isolation, and I didn't understand how to answer any any problem solving question where I had to use more than one mathematical method. When you are learning throughout the year, you need to understand how this topic that you're currently studying links to the other things you have previously done. The best way to learn how to do that is by doing practice paper questions as you go along. Do targeted practice question. So it's not enough to just do those textbook questions where you practice the method in isolation. Of course, that's important so that you understand the general, the general technique, how you do this new thing. But then you need to apply your knowledge to an applied setting. You need to search up a topic and then GCSE maths onto Google and you will find a question pack of practice paper questions with targeted questions that you can try out. I really recommend Math Genie for this. At the end of the day, you need to be able to use a variety of different mathematical methods in one question because that last question in the paper that's usually really difficult, that's exactly what it's going to ask you to do. In addition to this, you need to be constantly keeping your tools sharp. You need to be practicing maths that you're not currently doing in the class. So if you're doing algebra, try to do some statistics. A fantastic way that you can practice this spaced repetition is through the Corbett Maths Five a day. Trying some practice questions for topics that you're not currently covering in class to make sure you haven't forgotten how the maths works, how it relates to what you're currently doing, and critically, how you apply that knowledge in an exam setting. Exam technique. One minute a mark. I kept running out of time in the papers. If you don't understand how to do something, leave it, come back to it at the end, and then at the end, write something down. Even if it's just a formula, you might get a mark. Also, lay out your working in a coherent manner. You don't want numbers flying here, there, and everywhere, because that's going to be very difficult for the examiner to give you full marks. If they're trying, actively trying to pick out marks from your working, you want to make it as easy for the marker to give you marks as possible. You need a logical chain of working. What did you do? What did you do next? What did you do next? It needs to be very clear so that you can get the method mark. Again, don't leave anything blank. If you leave it blank, you're definitely not going to get the mark. If you put something, even if it's wrong, you're more likely to get the mark than if you wrote nothing. If you like this video and you want to see more GCSE tips, then be sure to follow because I am posting every single day.